Hello YouTube, this is MK Vine once again, and I will be making a video response to Z Cooker's 88, 88's video called Jesus is the Rock, not Peter. Firstly, I would just like to point out that I found an article online which says pretty much verbatim what Z Cougar is saying, so I will post a link to that article in my description section for those of you who are interested in reading it. So let me begin by quoting Matthew 16, 18, and it says the following, And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The first assertion that he made in his video was that in Matthew 16, 18, the Greek says the masculine Petros for Peter and the feminine Petra for rock. So given, given this distinction, Petra must refer to something uh, other than Peter. Petra must refer to something else. He also gives an analogy of the actor and the actress, which distinguishes the gender. What he fails to realize is that in Greek, proper nouns do not require matching gender nouns. Let me repeat. In Greek, proper nouns do not require matching gender nouns. So we know this uh, because in 1 Corinthians 10.4, Christ, the Greek uh, Christos, can be matched with the feminine rock, Greek Petra, since there is no feminine form of for Christos. So if the feminine Petra can be coupled with the masculine Christos in 1 Corinthians 10.4, What's stopping us from coupling the feminine Petra with the masculine Petros in Matthew 16, 18? The answer is absolutely nothing. But la later in the video, I will prove why Peter is referred to as the rock. But let me just move on to his other points. He then goes on to say that in the New Testament, Petra is referred to four times, which are Matthew 16, 18, Matthew 27, 60, 1 Corinthians 10, 4, and 1 Peter 2, 8. He then says that all these verses refer to a massive rock. So the implication is that Peter, who is called Petros, uh, which is a small pebble or stone, cannot be the Petra, which is a large immovable rock. Firstly, these terms are interchangeable. Petra and Petro, Petra and Petros are interchangeable. In the Attic Greek, there was a distinction, but the New Testament was written in the Koine Greek, uh, in which Petra and Petros are interchangeable. But just in case you are doubting, let's go to scripture to analyze this closer. Petra can and does refer to a small stone or pebble. For example, in Romans 9.33 and 1 Peter 2.8, the Greek word lithos, meaning small stone, is coupled with the Greek word Petra in, in the imagery of a, making a man stumble and fall upon a rock. These two verses are taken from the Old Testament in Isaiah 8:14, which says, quote, "And he will become a sanctuary and a stone of offense and a rock of stumbling to both houses of Israel." Unquote. The imagery of a man falling and stumbling over a rock can only make sense if the rock was small. Uh, the rock w was not a massive stone. Otherwise, how can someone not see a huge rock in their way? And even if they did see it. The rock would be so big for them to stumble upon. Uh, so, that, I mean, it doesn't make sense. But we do know that Petra does mean, uh, f from what I just gave you, a small stone. And it also means a, a large stone. It just depends on the context. Uh, now moving on to uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, you, to your next point. You say in 1 Corinthians 4.10 that Petra is, refers to Christ himself. And with this, I agree. But you cannot use 1 Corinthians 10.4 to argue that Matthew 16.18 uh, cannot call Peter the rock, simply because they are two different contexts. Christ is the focus of 1 Peter 10.4, and Peter is the focus of Matthew 16.18. Also, like I pointed out earlier, proper nouns do not need to match with gender nouns. So this is the very reason why the masculine Christos can be coupled with the feminine Petra. So according to this rule, Petra can also apply to Peter. Then you go on to say that uh, rock can only apply to God. You say you quote Deuteronomy 3:23, First Samuel 22:2, Psalms 18:31, and Isaiah 44:8. 
uh, what you fail to realize is that other people can be called rock as well, such as Abraham in Isaiah 51 verses 1 through 2. Another example is that Jesus is the only foundation, and this is seen in 1 Corinthians 3.11, but we see later on that the apostles too are the foundations, and this is in Ephesians 2.20. The next point was that we have no Aramaic te text, uh, so there is no proof for the Catholic position. Granted, we haven't found the Aramaic originals, the, fa the church fathers do say that Matthew was originally written in Aramaic but putting that aside let me just uh, refute your assertion from the Bible itself firstly as you mentioned in your video uh, John 142 Peter is called Cephas Cephas is an anglicized transliteration of the Aramaic Kephas Kephas can mean both Petros and Petra so in Aramaic there would have been no distinction and therefore, Peter could have um, Peter was Kephas the rock, since there is no distinction. But then you say that Kephas is not a proper name. Well, in your own quotation, it says that Kephas is only a name used for Peter. This is from your own quotation. It says that Kephas is only a name used for Peter. So what this is implying is that um, Kephas is uniquely used only for Peter. It is unique to Peter. So you basically refuted yourself using your own quotation. <clears throat> also, in the New Testament, Cephas is used as a proper name. We see this when the other apostles call Peter Cephas, which again is an anglicized transliteration of the Aramaic Cephas. This is seen in John 141, 1 Corinthians 1.12, 1 Corinthians 3.22, 1 Corinthians 9.5, 1 Corinthians 15.5, in Galatians 2 9 but let me move on and say why Peter is the rock of Matthew 6 and 18 first of all um, do you notice how the verse says epi tautite petra upon this rock and not the more ambiguous upon the rock or upon a rock um, where it could be argued that that upon a rock or upon the rock uh, is more ambiguous so you would have a case for referring it referring to someone other than Peter but Matthew doesn't use this he says upon this rock uh, using the and he uses the demonstrative adjective tauti which is which means this and this is more likely to specify the closest noun which in this case is Peter so and secondly if uh, there was a distinction between Petro and uh, Petros and Petra then Matthew could have written, you are Peter, but upon this rock I will build my church. And we can see how the demonstrative pronoun this will be pointing to something other than Peter. And this would intensify the separation between the two nouns. But, but Matthew doesn't do that. He writes, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Matthew is connecting the two phrases, making them one and the same. Also, um, we see from the context that Matthew 16, 18 is referring to, referring to Peter, since Jesus addresses Peter in verse 17, 18, and 19. So in conclusion, yes, Christ is the ultimate rock. I agree. But Christ, who is also the builder or the architect, as seen by the phrase, quote, and I will build my church, unquote, means that he, is, he will also build his church on Peter, since he, since he is the architect um, and also I will be providing uh, references in my description section for all the Protestant commentaries who support the Catholic view and so far I have shown from the from the Greek grammar from the context um, and from the Aramaics and from just exegesis of uh, scripture that the rock does indeed refer to Peter and most uh, Protestant commentaries will agree on with that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So thank you everyone for watching. And may God bless you all in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.